groovy. I put these on there very dark. Yeah, people can't see no, crap. Can't see. Yep, that's the way it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Let me talk to the invisible. Well, it, it films better. <laughs> Good. All right. So, welcome to Conversations in Sunglasses. Well, I'm happy to be here. Good, good. <laughs> happy to have you. This is this is my dad who ran away, faked his death, and moved to Costa Rica. Uh, so I didn't do it to get to get a job faking it though. So a yeah. lot of people still find me. Yeah. Yeah, you're terrible. I'll do a better job next time. Terrible at faking things. <laughs> Just too genuine a fellow. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> something so how are things in costa rica that sounds like it should be a song yeah it it could be (laughs) things are always pretty good here in costa rica we uh just cruising along nice weather a little cloudy today and windy but yeah same um, here it's okay we don't get really a lot like tornadoes and things like you do that's nice crazy stuff like that we get some high winds and some hard rains but that's about it yeah rarely do we even get a tornado i mean a a hurricane we're just a little south of the hurricane zone we'll think we had one kind of touch us a couple of years ago that's it nice and we're up in the mountains here so they don't really bother us we're not on the coast so everything is good Good, good, good. Yeah, we get nothing but crazy weather here. I don't even know how to dress. Yeah, this is uh, this is all part of climate change. I'm pretty sure it's getting worse and worse weather-wise. Yeah, pretty sure. I read an article that said that the birds in the upper Midwest were going to their nest early. Mm. I guess because they felt so warm and now you turn around and they're having a blizzard up there. So, right, it may, uh, be good for the bird population this year. No, not at all. It's scary. It's scary times all around. <laughs> no, no kidding. But spooky, yeah, spooky. Well, I'll stay down here. Thank you. I, uh, I can almost figure it out down here. Good job. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Always trying. Might as well. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's pretty quiet. We don't have a lot going on. I had a Spanish class on Monday. That was the big event of the week, I guess. Okay. It's really just people getting together for breakfast. So it's not much <laughs> of a class. I mean, have you learned any Spanish or just like menu items si. in Spanish? Si. Oh, that's si. okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay. Yeah, I can pretty... Speaking of Spanish, like yeah. you allowed you allowed me to watch corrupt things like Looney Tunes when I was a child. I did, and I, did. I almost encouraged. Yeah, and I, I recently learned a thing doing research for a novel that is glaringly obvious now that I know it, and I'm curious mm-hmm. if you knew this that. Speedy Gonzalez's cousin, Slowpoke Rodriguez. Remember that guy? Yeah. He was stoned. He was smoking weed. <laughs> like he I saw a clip from a Looney Tune where he's literally singing the verse in La Cucaracha that is about smoking weed. And he's wandering <laughs> into a cat's house just oblivious to danger. Were you aware of this? No, I really, uh, I really didn't get into that level of it. I knew he was. Uh, I always thought he was kind of drunk myself. Well, see, that's what I thought, or I thought it was like a genetic thing. Like Speedy Gonzalez just was Speedy. Slowpoke Rodriguez was just slow. Now I wonder if Speedy he Gonzalez was, was on cocaine. Speed. What? I think he did right. Mollies. I think so. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on in Looney Tunes. They were loony. Right. <laughs> but just stuff uh, a yeah. little kid is not going to pick up on. 
No, no, with any luck. <laughs> Save that for later. See, it was a great revelation for you. So somebody else will have that revelation one day. So keep it under your hat. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, too late. I mean, five or 20 people may see this and it's all, it's all out of the bag. <laughs> Everyone's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to catch up on some of these episodes because I got two or three waiting to be seen. Oh, really? I get them, get them over YouTube. Uh, I find those by the way on YouTube. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some of them run on and on. Interesting these days doesn't go that long. Say what? I mean, attention span isn't that long anymore. Oh, right. It's yeah. true. Yeah, this is just a mindless background noise kind of thing <laughs> that I do for folks. Yeah. You have to turn it on and be doing something else a little bit. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the way that I take in. I, you know, I don't know that there are actually similar things on YouTube, but if it's just people talking like a podcast or something, I'm, sure I'm always multitasking. Thing. That are just people talking, probably. Yeah, yeah, there are plenty that are just people talking. <laughs> but a new one went up today. Uh, oh, yeah. I did one with Molly. That's the first one I did this year. That's one I saw. I want to be sure that I hadn't seen her in 20 years, I guess. Today. Right, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, a while. Those Decades. Are you. Decades. <laughs> so you watch, so you watch these things that. Well, I, every chance I, I, I have some time to put together, and I sometimes do them in two or three segments, like I said. So I haven't watched the one with Molly yet. Oh, okay. But I'll catch up on it. <laughs> well, yeah, if you're watching, I, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to behave more on these fights. <laughs> I should, I guess. Um, let's see. So... So you're old. You're like the old yeah, Glenn. Ancient. Ancient. Glenn Clark. What's it, what? Senior. Yeah, very senior. It's Incredibly cool. senior. Just when what's you that? On the road this far, and you wonder, wow, how did that happen? I have no idea. Just can this be true? But I am this old, and uh, <laughs> that's what it is, you know. So yeah, <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> and they're talking some, something today about uh, when Ronald Reagan was president. And they said, you know, that was 40 years ago. And I said, 40 years? Holy Moses, yeah, it was 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah I don't like to do math like that. Like, you know, Star Wars is about to be 50 years old in a few years. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no. Nah, nah. <laughs> So that can't be true. Years from when I was born, uh, something like uh, Teddy Roosevelt for somebody who was president. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to kind of put it in perspective there. So, oh, I see. In other yeah. words, I have a lot more behind me than I have ahead of me. So it stretches back a long way. I mean, it depends. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. You could become a, a digital construct and live on eternally. Maybe so, but I uh, don't totally hope for that. Uh, <laughs> I, may, I may live, uh, you know, it's possible I could live 100 years. I think that's some grasp of people these days more than it oh, was yeah. a few years ago, but I don't want to if I can't get it up and get going and get around every day and enjoy life. So, right, yeah, for if sure. I just have to lay in bed. I just as soon go ahead and check out. <laughs> and let somebody else take my place. <laughs> right. So you can have this. You can have this food. I won't be needing it. So. Mm. Morbid. <laughs> yeah, yeah but it is. It just. <laughs> Thought of just taking up space and eating food for somebody. I said, you know, that's uh, that's not a pleasant way to count the years. Oh no, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do that either. Not at all. 
And uh, I know people that live a long time, that have lived a long time and, and uh, their health failed them, but their brain was there. I don't know that I want that because I just know that I, my health was bad. And I don't know if I want my brain to fail and keep a healthy body because it doesn't do you any good to have a healthy body if your brain has failed. So, oh, no, no. Uh, either like... way, I can't think of a way of going. I have, I'd have to have my health and my, and my brain pretty much functioning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both. Not one or the yeah. other. No, no. <laughs> so maybe one day what, what our society will let us do is decide it's when it's time to go in a nice, peaceful way. And uh, I think we need to do more of that. But like you say, that's a morbid thing. Right. <laughs> okay, I've had it. Time to my time to check out. I'm going <laughs> to say goodbye to everybody. Right. And then I'm going to go. Yeah. There's a lot to be said for being able to do that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think so, you know. Yeah. Like, it's strange. Like, mm -hmm. You're going to keep paying thousands of dollars to keep me alive? I don't think so. That's not good for society to pay a thousand dollars a day for me to lay in a bed. I don't think that would be good. So, right. Well, hopefully. There's a moral uh, ground that will say, you know, yeah, it's time for you to yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully it won't come to that anytime soon. <laughs> hopefully we I'm don't need to worry about that. I'm not planning on it. I'm feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> right. I feel happy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I haven't turned the cart around yet to pick me up. I'm not, uh, not planning to check out. I'm having a great time. <laughs> That's I sent good. You a, a picture of my coconut plantation. Right? I saw that. Yeah. So yeah. how is that? How is the lovely bunch of coconuts? Is well, they're growing away. I actually got that as a uh, it was a decoration at a party, and it was they just had these little coconut shells with a tree growing right out of the shell. Huh. And the guy gave me one and gave my friend one. So I brought mine back and I said, I kept it in the shell for a while. And I said, you know, how do you plant these? And one of the groundkeepers said, just throw it in the ground. And I said, well, <laughs> I can do that. That's simple. So I just dug a hole into it and threw it in the ground and covered it up and off it went. My friend kept his in the, uh, in the shell until like just last week. Yeah. He came over and looked at mine and said, oh, yours is doing much better than mine now. I said, yeah, well, I planted it. I don't think it'll grow forever in that shell. So right. we had the guys here, the landscape guys here, threw it in the ground for him. So his is planted now, too. I couldn't get him to plant it by mine. And uh, then I got worried about there be all these coconuts falling on us. And I said, I don't think we'll be here when the coconuts start falling on us. Right. Well, well, I mean, we have plenty of other coconut trees around. Hmm. Let's see, how long does it take for a coconut tree to grow and start dropping? I how long know. before its nuts drop? That's what I want to know. I don't know. It'll be a long time, I think. Uh, I don't think it's reached even close to puberty yet. So Okay. I think it'll be a while. Uh, but things tend to grow fast here. So. Yeah. I'm just going to keep track of it and see what happens. There's okay. some giant coconut trees around here that are just loaded with coconuts, and they do just bong down to the ground. Boom. <laughs> it can be dangerous. Yeah. Like, that would be like a tragic and hilarious way for someone to check out. <laughs> just murdered yeah, by yeah, a coconut I'm tree. Sure, I'm sure it's happened, you know. I mean, oh, trees yeah. fall on people, and I'm sure branches fall on people, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, uh, it happens, it happens, <laughs> so I try and avoid them, you know, Keep yeah, good, out. good policy, I could wear a pith helmet, but, you know, people tell me I overdress now, because I wear, like, a shirt, 
<laughs> instead of a tank top. And I said, well, I got all these shirts. I may as well wear them. I had them for right. they're good shirts. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go out and buy just some, some tank tops. I have got a few tank tops. <laughs> I'm just not going to go out and buy a whole new wardrobe. I can relax in, in these shirts, too. So, yeah, as long as yeah. you're comfortable. I'm comfortable. And uh, they just say, well, you always have on a nice shirt. I said, well, it's not. It's just a shirt. <laughs> it's, <laughs> nice about it. it's just a shirt. So people. Like it was a casual one that, that Valerie gave me years ago. So it's not really a dress shirt. Okay. Got it. So. So is the norm that people just walk around ca- like scantily clad in Costa Rica? Well, not scantily clad, but, uh, you know, most everybody wears shorts and sandals and uh, just a T-shirt or tank top, or maybe a polo shirt or something, but, uh, which I have, you know, some polo shirts and things too. But the uh, that's mainly the expats. The, the Ticos wear shorts. A lot of them wear shorts, but. The, the worker bees uh, generally have on, you know, work pants, shirts, and uh, a hat of some sort to protect them from the sun. So, yeah. Don't see a lot of people in suits anywhere, no. Well, that's a good thing. No one should wear suits, ever. Yeah. It just should uh, not be done. <laughs> it's got a place, but uh, it's definitely not down here. And, uh, you know, most of the businesses, people don't wear suits or anything like that. We're nice. Out the, we're out in the boonies. You know, we're really in a little bitty town. And uh, we have to drive an hour and a half to get to, like, Walmart. So it takes us a while to, uh, to get anywhere where I think anybody would even think about wearing a suit. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to get into San Jose. That's four hours away. And then some of the mucky mucks there might uh, might wear suit, you know, mm-hmm. lawyers, politicians, and people like that. Uh, so, yeah. Well, they deserve yeah. to wear suits. Most of them. Yeah, good for them. Like, <laughs> good for them. In fact, we just had a presidential election here last Sunday. Oh, you did. Yeah. And, do you uh, do you do it on Sundays and everybody's off, you know, so you can vote. Imagine that <laughs> everyone's yeah, able to vote. Yeah. Do, do you get to vote in those or no? You... I am not a citizen, so I don't get to vote. But you're working on getting citizenship, right? Dual citizenship. I'm working on my I'm still working on just getting my residency. Residency, and that's just be able to live here as a resident, not as a tourist or a visitor. And Got that it. means I don't have to leave the country every so often. And you have to be a resident so long before you can apply for citizenship. Mm. And just like in the States, you have to take a test and take some classes and do things like that. So right. Not to that point. Not to that point <laughs> yet. I'm been two years trying to get my residency. So Jeez. And still don't have it. Oh, it's been a complete nightmare. So, mm-hmm. plus COVID shut it down right after we got here. Right. But oh, yeah. To... Y'all moved at a curious time in human history. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got here. I put applied for residency, I think, in January or February of 2019, 2020, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. We got down here in 19 and applied in 20. And now it's 22, and I'm still waiting for my residency papers to go through. So, yeah, it's been uh, quite a challenge. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, well. I mean, at least you're yeah. in Costa Rica, though. I mean. I am in Costa Rica, and that is great. <laughs> I'm happy to be here every day. It's beautiful, <laughs> and it's laid back, and uh, uh, just a hair cheaper to live down here. You know, they have. That's not hard to do. Too. Well, gasoline and, you know, cars, everything is imported. They don't manufacture a lot of things here. So Mm. uh, as a result, some of those things are expensive. Um, But uh, our housing, you know, is pretty reasonable and food is fairly reasonable. 
Uh, electric is fairly reasonable. My water bill is about eight dollars a month uh, on a good month. So, nice. Yeah, there's a. It's not terrible, and you know I've got a big. I rented a big place here, bigger than we need. Someday we'll probably have to scale back, but uh, we've got three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and we're in a gated community, and we're all right on the waterfront of a big lake, and uh, we have a tennis courts, and we have fruit trees, and we have all this going on, and uh, and uh, I'm paying less in rent than I did in Dallas for my two bedroom, one bath apartment. You know? Right. So, so there's some differences to be made. And I could rent a house probably and not have the gated community and so forth. Uh, yeah. And uh, pay about half of what I'm paying probably. You know? so, wow. Like I said, in one day, that may be what we have to do. Yeah. Well, it's nice. It's nice enough. It's better than we think. My landlord here hasn't been in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And he's 80 years old, so I'm, oh, geez. <laughs> I'm hoping nothing happens that we would have to give up this place. But yeah, so far, we're in good shape. Good. Gosh, we've been here two and a half years, and then I can't believe that. That's really zipped by. Yeah, it we doesn't. We were supposed to be down a year earlier, but, you know, we came down here to sign the lease. Mm-hmm. And he fell. And broke her arm. Oh, that's right. To the states, so she can have get some help there, and then she had another surgery, and that turned into three surgeries, and oh. so we were just about exactly one year later mm-hmm. coming back down, getting back down here. So we actually leased the house. The house signed it up in July, two thousand nineteen. And I came down a couple of times to get things ready, but Connie didn't get down here till October. So we didn't permanently move in until October. I was back and forth and uh, we got everything down here basically in October of 2019. So yeah, two and a half years. Wow. Amazing. Jeez. Yeah. The last yeah. two years just blur together for yeah. a it's lot like- of people, for everyone, you know, it just, nothing well, we were the we were the same way we wanted to be doing some traveling and stuff we didn't you know the place closed down a mm-hmm. lot of places you know resorts closed down they had curfew on the time she could be on a beach you know there there was just we spent a lot of time here in the compound <laughs> being safe you know right they still had mask mandates down here i think they've just eased up on if you go into a cafe and it's open air, you don't have to wear your mask inside. Any of the other business or place you go into, stores, banks, uh, you have to have your mask on. Yeah. Yeah, I still wear mm-hmm. mine. We don't have the mandates, but I still wear mine. Yeah. Um, a lot of people do. Like, I just feel like... Hit, hit them. I just feel like it's polite. You know, if the employees are wearing a mask, I should be too. Yeah, I think so. And uh, plus, a, we're still in a pandemic. <laughs> like it's still oh, there. Yeah. yeah, I was when I got back to the states last year. I was, see, yeah, I was back there last June. I was there this year, but before that, I made a trip. And you know, everybody was just all the stores where we suggest you wear. And I was like, "You're kidding! People are going without a mask. People are just walking around." without mask yeah oh my god and then you know sure enough after that they had another surge you know mm-hmm. the new variant came in so yeah, yeah. and i think we're about to have another little surge. Yeah. this next group i saw things are starting to go back up and it's starting on the east coast and uh, i think we're going to be in for another surge this one maybe not as deadly as the early ones but Still in all, if you don't have your don't have your shots, right, you know, it could be deadly. Depending on if you have some other problems, you know. Yeah, exactly. Any I'm, comorbidity you might have. Yeah, I'm not messing around with it. I keep. Don't. I, 
I need to get my uh, booster shot. Yeah. Good. And now they're getting to where you can have a second booster shot. So I need to I get think on. You have to be over 50 to get that second one. Oh, do you? I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I it's won't be getting it. Old, like... old timers could get your <laughs> other booster for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to just go in and quickly get that. It makes all the difference. We yeah. were fortunate here in that we weren't residents, but mm -hmm. uh, we had our application in. So the uh, government allowed us to get our shots here for free. And that nice. was nice. So we got two shots and then we got boosted. They mm -hmm. haven't authorized a fourth shot down here yet. I'm sure if they do, we'll be able to get that too. Yeah. So if we go back to the States, it just once you go back to the States and get it, then you've got two different countries of origins for your shots and it gets a little crazy trying to figure out who how they get you credit for all that so right uh, not that i hopefully won't be going back to the states for a while but hopefully <laughs> you'll be down here before i go up there that's what I yeah think. that would be ideal that would yeah. be good i want to try well, the zip have, lines you've told me about still have this place oh i'm gonna have one signed up for you it's a superman zip line nice i'll have to wear a superman hang shirt your, hang from your back and put your hands out straight fly through the air like that excellent head first <laughs> that would be <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll get some film rolling when you do that <laughs> yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd be great to get you down here in Val. I want Val to come down while we still have this place. Mm -hmm. We go jump in the lake and we got a pool and we got tennis courts, like I said, all this stuff. But there's nice. a lot of things to do around here. We can be at the beach in two hours and jump in the Pacific here. We haven't made it over the Caribbean side yet, uh, but I want to do that one day to take, take a trip over there. Just uh, more hours on the road. There's not a lot going on on the Caribbean side. Mm. One big town, Limon, and uh, then the whole northern half of that is pretty much reserves. Uh, and the southern half is got one other kind of touristy town in it towards Panama down on the hillside. And uh, I'd like to just go down there and knock around. It's, that's supposed to be real laid back. And uh, I'm sure the ganja plane lands regularly over there too. So probably. <laughs> but I want to go and just see the Caribbean side too. It's supposed to be some beautiful beaches and stuff over there. We have some real nice beaches over here mm -hmm. too on the Pacific side. And the water's always nice. And we love going over there and spending a couple of days hanging out on the beach. So yeah, we got things for you to see. You need to come and need to plan to spend a couple of weeks when you can come. So we'll, cool. we'll find a way to make that happen. First, you have to get your visa, your passport. Right. Yeah. First, there's yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> Step number one, it might be good to have a passport no matter what's going on in your life. Right. True. Yeah. You ever like, want to get out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You will have to have it. Which I've, you know, I've had to have that thought a number of times over the past several yeah. years. The previous presidential administration had me wondering when we have to flee the country, like yeah. on the yeah, daily. Like, oh, wait, this is just, uh. but yeah, I mean, yeah. your situation sounds bliss. Like, I could see you doing a YouTube channel, just how to be retired. <laughs> for future from the last generation to be able to do so well, here's my, what that uh, was my, like my uh, suggestion would be to everybody is first become a millionaire right? Right. we don't do a lot of things that we would like to do but but uh yeah it uh, it's nice to be able to lay back after 70 years of work it was <laughs> time to take a deep breath mm -hmm. and relax but you know, we don't uh, we don't do a lot of things here. No, I, we could have a maid for pretty cheap, but I said we don't need a maid. I mean, we got lots of time on our hands. We can sweep the floor. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. Right. And, uh, we're starting. Hopefully, we'll start to get out a little bit more. Uh, but I have an extremely old car, so I have to be careful and keep that maintained and get repairs on it all the time. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, 
Now repairs are cheaper than they would be in the States, but you still have to get some repairs. I had to have some work done on the, uh, on the alignment, the chassis on this little car actually had, was a little out of a line and, uh, mm. and I had to take it in and put it on a special machine and I took it in twice and they took it to an alignment place after that. And they did that twice. So it was in the shop for three or four days. And I think when I finally got it back and paying the alignment guys and the guy that had it in this shop, I think I spent 240 bucks maybe. So, uh, we couldn't drive in a shop. Uh, <laughs> We're under $500 in the States. Right? No. I mean, yeah, I was just saying your 300 goes a lot further than mine. Like yeah, I just had to put like my that. car in the shop to get the battery changed cost $300 <laughs> like yeah because because yeah. my car she's bougie like she <laughs> you can't do anything on your own she has to go into the shop to get yep. well all kind i got even this one i couldn't this is a diesel and i wouldn't know what to do with it so it's got to go to a shop mm-hmm. but you know i've uh, i've made friends here with a lot of the, a lot of ticos and so i you know where do you go and i've got great uh, neighbors fellow gringos and expats here who have been through the wars and know this so we'll take it to this guy or take it to that guy and mm. uh so nice. i've had a lot of help and uh that, that means a lot you know so we moved into a good spot with some good neighbors and everybody's pretty laid back and everybody here's pretty uh uh you know, helpful and uh, on board politically. And they all just said, yeah, everything's good. <laughs> you know, we don't nice. spend a lot of time talking about politics or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I do keep up with the politics. Of course, I still read my papers every morning when I do my crossword. Mm-hmm. And I try to watch maybe one or two shows, new shows a day. If Rachel would ever be on her show, I try to watch it at night. Rachel Maddow. She's about to, yeah, she's about to check out. Well, she I think she just announced she's gonna um start doing her show once a week rather than yeah, starting starting in May. She'll be on four nights a week the rest of this month. Okay. So I hope she is taking that time. Supposedly she's producing wonderful things that will be on the show. Hmm. Uh they'll they'll have somebody else taking over that spot pretty soon yeah i don't know how Um, she does four days a week like i would burn out so fast because she's so in depth and so passionately engaged with the topic she's talking about like how do you even do that 10 or 20 million dollars it would help true you could probably hire research uh, people and (laughs) Yeah. And she has a staff that goes on great, like amazing yeah. staff. So all of that uh, sure helps out. I know you can get burned out on it, but you know what? You get burned out on any job. Right. And, that's uh, true. That's true. You need a break. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't uh, begrudge her any time off, but uh, oh, no. she's had a lot lately. I know she's, she's working on other things, but I hate to see her go, I guess is my main thing. I just hate to see her not be that voice over there of right yeah, yeah for sure for sure um i was gonna ask you something about politics i don't remember what so like all the people in your little community there is everybody from the united states or are there people from other countries as well there's a guy here from puerto rico oh okay uh, we have another neighbor who is here. He's uh, from Germany originally, although he spent time in the States. So he is here. Uh, he's been in Costa Rica a long time. We just had another couple come in. I think he's German and she's Swiss there, but they were from Germany and they just bought a house here. So most of people are expats from the United States, but we do have a, people from other, other countries here. So. This That's is really a big area here around mm-hmm. Arenal. Uh, it, 
the Swiss and the Germans and Austrians love it here. And a lot of them uh, have come here. We got 25 kilometers or uh, really, if you drive about an hour over to a little town called Kanyas, it has a, a, quite an Asian uh, population there. And they evidently immigrated to Costa Rica years ago and have maintained a community over in Cañas and to some extent in the little town of uh, Teleron, which is just 25 minutes from here. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's different groups, but ours is uh, uh, seems to be the uh, Central Europeans like this area, I guess, because of the hills and the mountains. Uh, it looks like Switzerland in the summertime, I guess. So they're, they're <laughs> Right. Be, uh, you nice. know, the cows up on the hills and all that. But the climate is nice and that, you know, it's coolish uh, compared to being down on the, on the uh, beach where you could get up to 90 a lot of days there and a little muggy. But up mm -hmm. here, you rarely get out of the 80s. And at night, you're in the high 60s or low 70s. It's just pretty pleasant all the time here. And we have this big condo, but... There's no air conditioning here. So we have no heating or air. Just open a window Ooh. and turn on a fan. See, yeah. that's so alien to me. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just I don't speak that language. What? So we open a window. We have a big veranda outside of our master bedroom. Two rocking chairs out there. We sit on that. Every evening we're down on the patio and back. We were overlooking the lake, and I have happy hour starting it. We used to start at 5, but I moved it up to 4.30, so I have a happy hour and a half. And uh, <laughs> I moved it up because it was getting dark a little earlier. Oh, okay. And then I kind of got, well, I think I'll just keep it at 4.30. So, and uh, then you guys jumped ahead an hour. Right. Which is, yeah, I, I, I do what you did all the time when I'm going to call somebody and then we have to get back up. Was that one o'clock your time or one o'clock our time? Yeah, yeah. Because when I and told you was, I'll set up the Zoom for one o'clock, I was, I completely forgot. Yeah. And I said, okay, my one o'clock is your so, noon. <laughs> yeah. I said, that's great. I'll run downstairs and drive a bite to eat, and, uh, which is what I did. And came down, I brought it back up here, as a matter of fact, upstairs. <laughs> Sit outside and just had my feet up rocking and having my lunch. Then I was uh, making the bed when I heard your, your second text there. I said, oh, <laughs> he's on Zoom. So I just dropped it and so I get on real quick. But yeah, it's bad enough uh, with the East Coast and West Coast things. But boy, mm -hmm. when you guys jump forward, which Costa Rica doesn't. Have savings time, daylight right. savings time. Well, we're so apparently we're to try and figure out. Let's see. Now the East Coast is two hours ahead of us here. So if we're trying to tune into a U.S. television show, we have to. Okay, what time is that going to be on? Uh, yeah, you know, right now Rachel Maddow comes on at seven o'clock here. Mm. So kind of right in the middle of our TV watching time. And uh, she was coming on at eight, which maybe that was the last thing we watch at night. And we generally start getting to bed about nine o'clock here, and uh, which we call Rainbow Bay Midnight. So it's Rainbow okay. Bay Midnight, nine o'clock. All those old <laughs> people are saying, okay, that's the time to go. <laughs> we have community happy hours here. And we will go over by the pool and everybody will bring something to eat or We'll just have some wine and snacks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they generally start about five. And at seven o'clock, it's closed down. I mean, everybody's gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two hours. That's plenty. We had it. Now we got to go home and either eat or watch a show because at nine o'clock, midnight here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Strange. You live in a strange world. It's a, it's a strange world. It's a, it's a brand new world. When you uh, get here, you'll say, oh, my goodness, my father has moved to indoor. He's in the jungle. And uh, you, you'll be partly right. 
<laughs> he's looking for Ewoks. He's, he's really gone crazy. <laughs> Ewoks will probably feel right at home in this little place. You know? Giant trees all over here. You know, we're talking mm. 70, 80 feet tall. Wow. And, you know, the rest of the tropical stuff, banana trees and palm trees and coconut trees, lush vegetation, beautiful flowers everywhere. And it's all year long, you know, it's, it's always, it's never winter or summer here in the rainforest. It's always spring and fall all at once. So uh, that's the seasons we get. They have two seasons here, we call the dry season and the wet season. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now we're supposedly in the dry season, but up here in the rainforest, we still get some rains, not like we do in the wet season, but uh, down on the beach right now, I'm sure it's pretty dry in different places. So yeah, but, uh, all in all, pretty good. And then we're on a lake, so we've got all this water up around us all the time. The lake is 30 miles long, so... Jeez. Okay. And I think the deepest point they've measured on this lake is about 200 feet. Huh. So lots of water in. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, clear lake, too. Just all these little streams. So they, we would call streams and creeks, and they call them rivers, rios. Ah. Uh, these little rios run in and feed this thing. There's a lot of little rios coming out of the mountains around here. So. It's nice, clear water. Just You can see from people uh, scuba dive here because it's clear. You know? so, cool. Pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what if that's If I go like. off your screen, let me know because I can't see my screen. <laughs> oh, you're there. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. So I'm you're wandering down. away. Let me know. <laughs> yeah. just, I'm glad so there's... Going a connection because on the phone it's really like the last several times i've tried to talk to you on the phone i haven't gotten two yeah. words before we lose the connection I like and i have no idea what's going on with that yeah that's um, weird so yeah crazy we next time may we may try doing it it could be the phones but i don't know I yeah sometimes do fine with the phone sometimes mm -hmm. we don't do fine with the phones we had a zoom Oh, Connie's computer. I haven't zoomed on my this new computer yet. Oh, okay. So I didn't have any Zoom stuff on here. Connie gotcha. generally sets it up. And I just mm. walk down and say, "Okay, are we on?" Because <laughs> I'm, I'm through with. I'm out of makeup, and I think I've got the spotlight on. So everything good. <laughs> Let's sit down and talk. Nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like um, what was I gonna say? You know. Okay, like, this, the thing I appreciate about you genetically the most is that you're not bald. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm really glad you haven't lost your hair because yeah, it gives me I'm, hope. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to make it now. Uh, yeah, I think by no, now uh, I would have started going bald. Yeah, I think you'd have been showing something worse than now. Uh a couple of my brothers had, well, Jack, I know, had a little ball spots going. Mm. Uh, a lot of the Clarks had some, uh, they were famous for, you know, ball spot on top, back of their head. I didn't uh, know that. That's uh, terrifying. Uncle Donald, Uncle Ralph, and, you know, and they had great receding hairlines. But uh, uh, now the Slades all had a full head of hair, all of them. So you got some Slade jeans. Good. Uh, that, Kind of fought back on that. My dad always, he didn't go bald, but he had uh, he had real thin hair towards the end of his life. And mm -hmm. he was getting bald, close to bald in a couple of spots. But of course, then he would trim his hair down to nothing. So. Right. Like his hair was always so oh, short. How would you know? <laughs> yeah, it went right down to the, his haircut went right down to the scalp on the top. Mm -hmm. so. Uncle yeah. Mark was starting to get thinned out, but I don't think he would have gotten a bald spot, you know. Mm -hmm. and uh, Ori, I don't know about Joel I haven't seen him in so long whether he inherited the ball spot or not. but uh, he always had plenty of hair and Ori has not had a problem with hair so at least you yeah, you should have a, be alright with your hair Although I hope so to say, 
about being bald, I, you know, if I was bald, I'd want to just completely like go bald, you know. So, and, uh, even if I had uh, like just pattern baldness or something, I said, you know, I'm just going to keep some clippers and this is just going to be, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to bother to comb and brush this. Mm-hmm. Much, you know? Yeah, see, I'll I don't know. With a wash rag. I don't know what I'd do. Like, would I shave my head or would I go Ben Franklin? Like, just <laughs> be bald with like, I think Molly <laughs> called it a skullet. Somebody called it a skullet. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, would, uh, that would be a little, a little weird. I think I would just have to keep it real short, mm-hmm. you know, which you can do with like a, a, a pair of clippers and a number four or number three blade on it. Just whoosh. And it's mm-hmm. done, and never go to the barber, and it's, it's all that you know. I, so, I never uh, go to the barber. In some respects, it's nice. You have no hair to take care of. I would just go ahead and make it real easy. I was bald once in the uh, in the service. I was bald, so. Oh, that's right. You were in the Marines. Yeah, they peeled us down to a boot camp there. Then we got out of boot camp. They let us have a little on top of our head. But they pretty much kept me <laughs> shaved down on the sides. Was that day one? Like you walk in and they shave your head. You walk like... in, they give you a haircut. Yeah. And pretty okay, and, and you all got like just murdered with shots, right? Like so. So yeah, as a for, as a former Marine who was yeah. just annihilated with injections when you walked in, like how do you feel about the whole, um, you know, like the military? wanting to opt out of getting the COVID vaccine. I don't understand it. I don't understand it being an order. In the service, you have to take orders. And you can't say yes or no. And I can tell you, in, in the Marines, because we didn't get those shots the first day. We, that was on down after we'd gone through some basic training. And I don't know what kind of shots I got. There was never <laughs> a question of, will you take this kind of shot? I mean, we rolled up our sleeves and uh, walked down a hallway, mm-hmm. and there were these medics on in standing in doorways on the, up, up and down the hall, and they had those, you know, air gun things. And mm-hmm. you get popped in this arm and that arm. You go to the next station, you get popped in this arm and that arm. <laughs> you get popped. And I don't know how many shots we got, but then at the end of the hall, I walked outside, and your drill instructor was waiting there, and he said, "Drop down and do 50. It'll keep your arms from hurting. <laughs> and your, your arms are actually bleeding from all the shots. It was just blood running down Jeez. your arms. So, but somebody say, oh, well, I'm not going to take that shot. I was say, well, you're not going to take that shot. For one thing, it should never be a question for another thing. You're going to be in a position where you're going to be packed in tight in maybe a dangerous situation where your life depends on your pal being mm-hmm. in good shape. Right. And I can't, I don't want to be in a foxhole with a guy that all of a sudden comes down and is dying of COVID or might give me COVID. Right. <laughs> my, you know, how do you, how do you even let that happen? Mm-hmm. You know, you can't say, okay, sorry, I've got COVID now. So I'm out. You can't, you, you, you don't have that choice. You're there. I mean, if you're, in, if you're on active duty and you're in a combat zone, you don't, you can't just say King's X, uh, I can't help you, so goodbye. Uh, you're there, man, and you've got to do your job, and you've got to be able to depend on everybody doing their job and being healthy. That's why you get all those other shots, so that when you go over there, you don't jeopardize the mission, but, oh, well, all of our people just got malaria, so we can't defend your city today. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? We're not going to get malaria. We're not going to get yellow fever. And the snake, if he bites me, he'll probably die. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. I was I was sure that I had so many shots that if I ever got snake, that the snake would die. And some probably. of those were snake bite things. They were, they, mm-hmm. you know, there are different things they know. We just said, I have no, like, I have no idea what all the shots they got. I guess we got my service record out. It would have to show I was inoculated for this, 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 and this. You know, mm-hmm. pretty sure I wouldn't get the plague or yellow fever or malaria or all those jungle diseases that uh, were pretty deadly. Where they tend to drop Marines off, and uh, so 
Right. But, you know, there's just a lot of situations. I have no, I, I don't understand it. Uh, you're too close and you're packed in too many times with too many people that you can't have a contagious disease. You can't have measles. You can't have mumps. You can't have any of those things going around. Uh, everybody's right there and everybody's depending on everybody else life or death situations you know mm -hmm. yeah and that's, that's the problem so i have i have no tolerance for anybody in the military saying oh, I'm, I'm not you can't make me take that shot yeah we can make you do anything we can <laughs> own you that's the way it was yeah pretty much yeah that's kind of how yeah. i see it too and of course that, 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 that is that how was, i see it there was some Marines and they were a little tougher, but there were some of the people objecting were Marines and I couldn't believe it. I said, wow, that's not the old Corps I was in. Uh, I think the Marines asked him, okay, if you don't want to take it, you can leave, but uh, mm. that's about it. You, know, you don't have a choice. You can stay with us or you can leave. You know, if you stay here, you're taking the shot. Yeah. So, yeah. Just wow. But it sounds like you know, they wouldn't have even told you back in your day what you were getting no, just lined shot with. Said, just we're all gonna get we're all gonna get <laughs> a shot today. Okay. You know, just march you down the hall again and you got a shot. Mm -hmm. One day when we were in boot camp, they loaded us all on a bus and said, We're going up to the Navy hospital and you're gonna give blood. So okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> down the bus, so we all went up to the Navy hospital and gave blood and then they put us on the bus and brought us back. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say, do you want to get blood? Or will you volunteer to get blood? They just said, get on the bus. We're going up to the Navy Hospital and get blood. <laughs> so that's what we did. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. America is a democracy. The military is not, is no, what I'm hearing. Be. It can't be. Because when they uh, say charge, you can't say, well, you know, I don't think it's a good idea to charge. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about this. No, there's no talking. We're going. We're mm -hmm. going this way, which is, uh, you know, the big Marine Corps thing. Follow me. We're going. Mm -hmm. And you go. So all of the training is you don't think. You react. You go. You get an order. You go. Go, go, go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can't have second guessing. That makes sense. And thank God I never had to go overseas or do any of that. So. Right. Yeah, Which you were lucky. Great, but I know what the training, I know what the training was all about. Because mm -hmm. you were in, you were in during the Vietnam conflict, right? Or were you just yeah. after yeah. it? Like, I was, uh, I enlisted during the Vietnam. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you were really the, fortunate. Toward the end of it, but we were, we were into the, uh, lottery by then mm -hmm. where you remember. and then i had gotten i dropped one course in college and uh which the college back then had to report you to the draft board and they uh, you had to take 15 hours every semester and i was working and going to school full-time and i just said i gotta drop this idiot the uh, philosophy course <laughs> and, so, and when I did they sent a letter to the draft board and it wasn't very long at all after that that I got my letter uh, saying greetings uh, and I had to go down and take my physical and uh, I was about to get drafted mm -hmm. so I yeah. ran around to look for a reserve unit you know, because I did not believe in the Vietnam War Right. And I did not want to get killed in the Vietnam right. War war is not right and I do not feel like I need to go uh, I did want to do something I felt like I had an obligation to serve somehow doing something and I went looking for a reserve unit to get into and every reserve unit in town was had a waiting list uh, I could have joined you know, a regular branch of the service, but then I, that would have been just about like getting drafted. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just kind of bouncing around when one day a gal at work who was in our office had a son who was in the Marine Corps Reserves in Galveston. And mm -hmm. she came in one morning and said, Glenn, Marine 
reserve unit in Galveston has an opening. My son just told me about it. You need to get down there immediately. And I went into my boss, uh, Bob Wadsworth, mm -hmm. and said, I've got to go. He said, take off. And I drove to Galveston that day. <laughs> and I went into the Marine Corps Reserve building, which is right by the ferry. You know, uh -huh. Right by the ferry landing. And three other guys had shown up for the opening. <laughs> That's how it was back then. I mean, wow. three other guys. Said, oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, they said, well, gentlemen, we got four of you here. We only have one opening, and it's for a radio technician. You'll have to stay in active duty one year instead of the usual six months. And because it's the highest MOS Marines offer, what we're going to do is give you all a test. Whoever scores highest on that test it's going to get this position. So we took a test, and it was some kind of like idiot test. And it was nothing to do about radio. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I got the highest score. Uh, Good. So nice. There was, was a song back then going around. Does this make me the winner? And it's like, uh, yeah. I said, oh, no. And then it was raise your right hand and take one step forward. Because that was your symbolic, you were volunteering. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And so I took my step forward and raised my right hand and took an oath. And then they sent me home. I think it was a couple of months before I left. But I was, I was in the Marine Corps. So that's how all that happened <laughs> for six years. Jeez. And because I did not go two years active, I didn't get any GI benefits at all. Hmm. Uh, I just was in a year. So I had to go to radio and electronic school and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, so then I said, when I was in there, I said, I went to my gunny sergeant one time. I said, uh, you know, why don't I just stay another year and get this over with? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he said, you can't stay just one more year. I said, why not? You know, draft it two years or whatever. He said, we've got too much invested in you now. You'd have to sign up for a total of four years. So I said, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> like, yeah. So he sent me to school for, you know, six or eight months, whatever I spent in school. And I said, yeah, sorry. Mm hmm. I think boot camp was about three months. So they sent me to nine months of school, electronic school and radio school and all that mess. So when I got out, they said, you can't up for one year. You can up for three more years. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, well, that's different. Yeah, that's way different. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I stayed in and I went to monthly meetings and went to summer camp every year for two mm -hmm. weeks. And a lot of fun. Kept my hair short. <laughs> right. Alien. <Yeah>. I don't... <laughs> and that was in the early 70s. So everybody's growing long hair and wearing mm. sort of crazy things. Anyway, I worked for the railroad, so I couldn't really have long hair anyway. So. Ah, right. Yeah. Note to self. Kind of conservative. Yeah. Don't work for the railroad. <laughs> well, that was back in those days. When you're officer of the company, you actually had to wear a white shirt to, and oh. have a hat. Huh. Like, what yeah, kind of a hat? A, a business hat and a dress hat. Okay, so... You wore, you like wore a coat 19... tie every day, and you had to have a white shirt. And it became almost hard to find a white shirt back in the early 70s. Everybody had stripes and yeah. paisleys, and it all gone crazy with big collars on. And... Uh, so I uh, had to keep white shirts. The only reason, the only time they had you wear a hat is if the chairman, the president came through. Ah. He came through and you had to see him. You better have a hat. Yeah. That's weird. So I always had a hat sitting somewhere there for a lot of years. And they finally did away with that. But I always had hats anyway. So some sort. Yeah. I guess fashion changes. 
and the expectations. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm hoping for ties to go out. I kind of wonder if they're on their way. Because I went shopping for a well, tie recently and couldn't. I went to four stores. They didn't sell ties at all. Oh, okay. And I'm like, well, and I yeah. finally found some. They had like five ties to choose from. <laughs> One yeah. of them was a bow tie. So there you go. I'm Which like, I love bow ties. <laughs> I was wearing ties. I wore a lot of bow ties. I hate to, I was just looking for a clip on. Nobody had one of those. I've got no shame. It's like, I'm only going to wear this tie hopefully once at a job interview and never again. Yeah. But when you find some, you know, that this clip uh, or that go around your neck, but actually mm -hmm. clip together and you can adjust it. I had some bow ties that did that early years and years ago. But, uh, I'd rather tie my own anyway. And tie it. Boy, not me. I just Everybody put a... used to complain because they get stuff on their tie and the ties are so expensive. And I said, you got a boat tie, you don't have that problem. <laughs> True story. I drip anything on it. <laughs> True story. And I just thought it looked like a bow tie looked good and it was neat. And it was, you know, <laughs> out of your way. Out of your way. Mm. Got the job done. So I still have bow ties. That makes sense because the other long yeah. ones. I just put a video up, I think, on Monday of me trying to tie a tie. You might check uh, that yeah, one out. Yeah, you, I, I saw something. I did get to watch that. Yeah, and I learned to tie a tie, you know, whoa, years ago. I was wearing ties in high school mm -hmm. uh, oh. because I was in speech, and we go to speech tournaments, and you had to wear a coat and tie at a speech tournament. Ah, okay. So I wore a coat and tie. There's a picture, famous picture of me was well, not famous <laughs> uh, in my high school yearbook uh -huh. and uh, i was sitting with a in a class actually and a guy came by for the yearbook and took a picture of me but uh, of course i knew the guy was working on the yearbook stuff but i was uh -huh. going to a tournament and i already had on my coat and tie and did it was a quip about you know best dressed student or something like that <laughs> <laughs> nice but it was like, yeah, I was in my coat and tie in high school. Yeah. And then there's another one of me. I was, they took a picture of me and I was on stage conducting one of our auditorium programs. But of course, I had a coat and tie on because I was conducting the program. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can find me in coats and ties early in my career. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually got to where I wore white shirts again all the time. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I could get up in the morning and not worry about what I was going to wear. I put on a white shirt and went with whatever else I had. Mm, so true. Whatever coat I put on or whatever tie I had. So that one decision was made for me before I ever got up, but it made a lot of other decisions real easy. <laughs> white shirt. Okay, good to go. Good. I hate white shirts. I I can't stand them. But no, I still have a five or six down here. Oh, probably ten down here that I brought. I said, well, they're good shirts. It's the tropics and it's white will be fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were people who came down here not only thought I overdressed, but they said, You're always in a white shirt. I said, No, no, just when you see me, I'm in a white shirt. <laughs> Every day I don't wear a white shirt. But they're nice, they're comfortable. <laughs> You know, I'm not don't have a tie on with them or anything. The sleeves are rolled up, and I'm fine. And uh, right, sometimes it gets a little breezy and cooler here, and I'll, I'll say, "Get a long sleeve shirt, come in handy today." So, anyway, yes, I'm a rather conservative dresser, I'm afraid, even down here <laughs> in the tropics. So, and, <laughs> although, you know, the good thing is, uh, like in the morning, my big decision here is what shorts am I going to wear today. Which, you just always right. wear shorts. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Fairly low stress living. Yeah. You, it's what you're doing. I put on shorts. I put on shorts, or basically, I've got two or three kind of hybrid things that are just really utility shorts. Mm -hmm. You can go swimming, or you can go hiking, or you can do whatever you want to do. And I'm, I need to get a few more pairs of those and then. That would be just set. I'm good. What shorts yeah. are you going to wear? That's the big question. Shorts and sandals. Sometimes, you know, when I'm 
dressing up, I'll put on my top siders. Nice. That's about it. And I've got some rubber Smurf shoes I wear in the house. <laughs> and I won't try to wear sandals out, out, outdoors. Cool. All right. So yeah. I know how to dress Life when I come good. visit. That's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't have to pack a whole lot, you know. That's excellent. And, uh, and we've got a washer and dryer. So just mm. bring a few few pair, a couple of pairs of shorts and some t-shirts or whatever you want. You, you can go in any place just about and not feel bad. Nice. With, uh, throw a shirt on, pair of shorts and sandals. And you're ready to go. Cool. 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 Well, hopefully, yeah. hopefully I'll get to come see you sometime I would in the near to, future. <laughs> well, I think things will come about. We'll, we'll get that done without it had any problem good good i think they will happen yeah we'll make it happen for sure yes we should absolutely um, we should for now i guess we need to wrap this up if it goes much longer no one will watch it it's been about an hour yeah. so oh yeah wow i'm trying by yeah it does it always does when i do these things it's always yeah. it's always like oh, i don't want to wrap it up but if i keep it going no well, one's gonna like watch it too, i talk too much but <laughs> there's no such thing there's no such thing on conversations in sunglasses <laughs> well i don't think we had too many dead spots so that's all oh none <laughs> none whatsoever <laughs> yeah, yeah okay enjoyed it Everyone yeah me too a great day. <laughs> <laughs> all right this has been all right. conversations in sunglasses with my dad all, all right, right. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.